Hi Scrappy friends, it's Audrey. Welcome to day 8 of Tis the Season 12 Days of Holiday Scrapping Videos. Today my layout is for uh, shimmers using some beautiful blue shimmers inks. And I've also used a cut file from Confessions of a Paper Addict. So here is my um, cut file. This is from Virginia Store. And it is a snowflake stitching file. Um, and I have used a variegated blue thread and stitched around the whole thing. I didn't show you um, my process of, of doing this in silhouette and cutting it out and hand stitching it because that would have taken forever. It did take me over an hour to hand stitch that whole thing. Um, and um, I am lining up the snowflake on my page and I'm using a white pen to mark off like where the tips of each snowflake is because I'm going to um, section off the background into six quadrants um, because there are six points on each uh, of the snowflake. By the way, um, of course, I have scrappy friends joining me today. Virginia is one of them. She designed that cut file. Uh, and Lori and Miranda. Miranda is also doing her own um, holiday series on her YouTube channel. So go check out all those ladies' pages today. So I am going to cover my background with some white gesso. And I'm kind of doing my brush strokes in like a burst pattern. Um, just so that the, you know, if there was any ink... Um, and if you could see any of the strokes underneath my ink, that they would kind of match the design that I'm going for. So I'm using two scraps of um, pattern paper kind of as a mask here. And I'm going to go through with a whole bunch of my shimmers inks. I'm not too worried about the overlap um, or any of the running because it will add to the look. So I have used uh, Chance of Rain, um, Frostbite, uh, Snow Wayman. Um, this is Well Blew Me Down. I have Boogie Board in Blue, I think, and then a, a hint of mint. So I have six different colors, and I have um, done the darkest color on one side, which is like kind of that navy blue. That's the chance of rain. And then on the opposite of the navy, I'm going to do the lightest color, which is this hint of mint. Um, and I guess I don't show you the last um, color here for some reason. My camera went out, um, but I filled that in. And I kind of just arranged them from darkest to lightest. So that has dried and I have um, blended in the inks. You can see a little bit there. So wherever the seam was on the ink, um, on the two different colors, by the way, I just went, kind of went over it with a brush and kind of lightly just brushed around. And I wish I had recorded that, but I thought I hit record and didn't record it. But um, you get the idea. You can see my brush strokes there with water. Um, so that just, and because I gessoed the background, it allowed me to blend. If you don't gesso your background, you're not going to be able to blend like that. Um, so if you want to blend, make sure you use some gesso on your background. And then I'm going to go through with some splatters of the Hint of Mint and splatters of the Chance of Rain and then um, some white splatters as well. I took the same six colors and I am painting these canvas self-adhesive stickers from Studio Calico. These are super old. Um, they're just like a canvas snowflake, and you can ink them, you can obviously spray them here, do all kinds of things. And once those have dried, I'm going to lay them out on their respective colors. So I use the same colors that I did for the background. And you see I have three photos here, and I have um, two photos on the right. I really wanted to use all three photos, but um, as you'll see in a little bit, I actually take the two underneath the snowflake off because it was just covering up the beautiful colors in the background and I think what I'm going to do is make a coordinating page to go with the snowflake page um, so maybe you will see that coming up in the future. I've used a piece of pattern paper kind of in a minty shade of blue is that even a thing a minty shade of blue I guess uh, and backed my photo with that um, and then I am looking for some embellishments a lot of these come from last December or January's hip kit club kit some wintry themed things and a couple snowflakes. So I'll add those on here. And of course, um, one of our favorite winter activities is sledding. So this is my son and one of his good friends sledding last year on this super big hill by our house and it was really fun. I wanted to use these little mittens. I thought they were adorable. They do bring in a little bit of yellow, but I thought that that was kind of nice. It just added a little tiny pop of color. So I found another ye little yellow star, and then I dig through my stash for a while trying to find a third yellow element um, because I'm all about that visual triangle with uh, colors. <laughs> so I spend some time doing that. 
and I finally found a little sticker that says love this and I put that in the bottom right of the of the picture and then a couple another couple um, label stickers there um, I have these tiny I'm just digging through my stash at this point so I have these really tiny like plastic snowflakes I have no idea where I got them um, I also have these like acrylic pieces from Pink Fresh Studio that are super old and then these super tiny adhesive snowflakes I, I think are actually from card making I just got these one of my friends is a stampin up consultant and I saw these in the catalog and I thought they'd be super cute because I love to use the tiny little bits on my page um, especially in the background so that's really what I'm doing here is adding a whole bunch of tiny bits um, and again I think I think I've talked about this before like the scale of elements in a page you know it's nice to have a large item or maybe one or two large items um, then some medium sized items and then some tiny tiny bits which I have of course with the tiny snowflakes and the tiny acrylic pieces so I think it brings nice balance to a page I love the way this background came out. It came out way better than I thought it did, and the colors just blend. I mean, you can kind of see the lines here, but when you put the snowflake on the top, you it, it just looks so blended and so nice uh, in the background. It's super pretty. So I'm loading up the back here with a ton of adhesive foam squares. I'm going to pop that snowflake off. There might be a better way to do this. Probably tape. I need to really invest in some foam tape. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear what brand you use and especially one that um, a brand that will stick to gesso without having to add liquid glue because sometimes like I'm doing here, I add a little bit of liquid glue because I feel like sometimes adhesive things don't stick well to gessoed backgrounds. But Okay, I love, love, love this. I, sometimes when I start hand stitching, I'm like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this to myself? I know it's going to take forever, but this was really relaxing. I do enjoy doing it. And when you have a pre-punched um, stitched cut file, which this is, so it comes with the holes punched out, oh my gosh, it is really time saving um, instead of having to punch all the holes yourself. So I highly recommend any uh, pre-punched or, or cut files that have holes in it ahead of time. Yes, I'm scrapping in my robe. <laughs> it's in the morning and I came back to finish this page because I was too tired to finish it the night before. So I'm in my robe scrapping. Um, I'm sure many of you scrap in your robe as well. I guess I'm just gonna glue things down now. Um, I've got my photo layer with some foam, um, craft foam, pop that up there. Um, everything else there is kind of layered and I'm trying, again, I try to match the height of the later layers by adding different um, numbers of foam squares on top of each other. So like that Hello Winter actually has two foam squares on the left of it because um, there are two layers of foam underneath that on the right because of the photo sticking up higher. I don't know if that made any sense, but uh, I'm just trying to say sometimes you have to level out your things if one side of them is popped up on foam and the other side is not. Um, and then for a final touch, I go back and add in some sequins. These are also, I also just got these from Stampin' Up! as well. And what I love about these is they're super, super tiny sequins. Many of the sequins I have are kind of like your standard size. Um, but in here there are some really tiny ones and they're really cute. And I am using this tool, I can't remember the name of it. Um, I saw one of my friends using it as, at a crop and it like sticks to anything and you can pick up little bits with it and it's awesome. And I don't know how it works. It's not sticky when you touch it, but it's very strange. It doesn't like leave a residue or anything. It's just kind of like a really sticky plastic, but it's great for picking up um, little tiny bits. So I didn't show you all those sequins, but you get the idea. And there is the finished page. I love, love, love how this came out. I love the colors. And I'm glad I used the variegated thread too. A, a very monochromatic for me. I wasn't intending to do a monochromatic page when I went into this, but um, I love it with that little pop of yellow. And you can see all the different layers and little bits there and all the pretty shades of blue. So thank you so much for stopping by and watching this process today. Be sure to go check out Virginia and Lori's and Miranda's pages today. Um, lots of holiday inspiration. And thanks so much. Happy winter. Stay warm and stay scrappy, friends. Happy holidays.